Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Just take a moment to worship with me. Hallelujah. This is one of my favorite tracks by Elevation Worship, featuring the Walls Group. Hallelujah. And I have a wonderful word of encouragement for the people of God today. Let's just take a moment to reverence the presence of our King. Welcome, saints. Welcome. Hallelujah. We're going to begin here. And the title of this short but powerful podcast and word of the Lord for today is going to be the evidence of the resurrection. Amen. The evidence of the resurrection, which is present. In God's people. It's present saints. And it's present because. Our king. Our king of majesty. He is yet. On the throne. Interceding. And empowering. His believers. And we're going to get into that. Hallelujah. Today. Hallelujah, by the Spirit, we're rising from the ashes of defeat, amen, and welcome, and thank you for taking a couple minutes out to listen to the word of the Lord, and to be encouraged, I know you saw the couple of slides that came on, amen, Line of Judah is on the move, we have our prayer event coming at the end of August, August the 30th, and August the 31st, From 6.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., we will be on the conference line. The number is 605-313-5111, access code 369076. And God has blessed us with the companionship of some real warriors of prayer across the nation amen it is birthing out just like god gave it to me that he was going to connect believers in a national way through line of judah and not just on sporadic calls but that we were going to get it up and do 24-hour prayer lines of people coming in with a passion for god and we're going to see some signs and wonders and miracles amen in the heavenlies, amen, and yet in the earth realm. And so I want those of you who are signed up already for this to be encouraged. Those of you who have not sent me that email at enamcbride at gmail.com to get on this line and pray, please do so if you're a prayer warrior. I promise you will not be um, disappointed. It's a beautiful fellowship of intercessors and we are going in and it's not for show. Amen. It's just time to pray. It's, it's the, the hour is late. We are in the time of the end and it is time to pray saints. It is time to get it together and to go into prayer, to go into war. That has got to be done and we've got to do it. We've got to do it. We can't depend on other people to do it. And yeah, it's okay to do it in your secret closet, but it's good to come together and do it as a unified front, as a front attack against the enemy there's nothing wrong with that because i know people say oh well you shouldn't put on a show and who want to stand on the streets of the synagogues and get the, the 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 attention no 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 that's that's not what this is about 
This is about attacking the devil in his face. The same way as they got those shooters coming out. Hallelujah. And they're shooting people. And they're killing people. Acts of violence. Amen. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violence taketh it by force. We're going in against the enemy. It's a straight out SWAT warfare attack. That's what we're doing. And anyone who doesn't understand that really doesn't understand scripture, really doesn't understand what God is calling for in this season. Because it's not about showboating. God knows that ain't what we're doing. But it is about being aggressive in the attack. And letting the world know everybody has not bowed down to Baal. Amen. Everybody has not bowed down and everybody's not going to bow down. There are some people who have bowed down and guess what? People are going to continue to bow. But those of us who are coming together in these latter times, in this end season, many of us have made up our mind that we're not bowing and we're going to aggressively attack back. Hey, we're going to aggressively come against what the enemy is trying to dilute our minds and tell us you know it don't take all that it don't take all that yeah it don't take all that when people getting shot either and that's why it's so important to be prayed up because prayer shifts atmospheres prayer shifts things from happening because prayer puts you in communion and it keeps you in place and i'm not gonna go too deep into that but let me tell you something people are getting into all kinds of situations because they on the outside of prayer i said it and i won't take that back if we look through the early books of the bible we find that people get themselves in trouble huh? when they're not doing what god called them to do huh? when they outside of god's will running around doing their own thing see the enemy comes in like a flood he gonna come in like a flood anyway the bible lets you know that the weapons of warfare they're gonna form so it lets you know the enemy gonna come in he going to come for you. But the but but the thing is, are you prepared? Do you have your lamps full of oil? Do you have the anointing? Are you in position? God is calling some people back to position. That's why I'm putting this this blog out, this podcast out, telling people, come, come to the prayer. Let us pray with you as we continue to reposition ourselves. I encourage you to reposition yourself and stay in place. And I'm not talking about places trying to get stuff in the world. Because people have taken God for a PT comedy show. Hallelujah. For a PT piggy bank. Oh, I want to be in position with God so I can get my blessing. Let me tell you, the fullness of the blessing is the resurrection power of Jesus Christ operating in his fullness in you. There's nothing wrong with natural blessings, but the Bible says those things are going to pass away. The only thing that's going to stand for sure, forever, is this living word. Amen. And that's what we want to continue to focus on. The message, again, is focus on resurrection power, saints. And yes, we have it. I don't want to say, do you have it? I want to say, yes, we have it. We have it. It's just, are you allowing that power to work through you and to revitalize you and to bring you forward out of the captivity of sin into the things of God? Because that's where we got to have ourselves. We got to stay focused into the things of God, not having our mind focused on on the things of this life. And I'm talking about resurrection power. Because if our Jesus. If our Lord didn't resurrect. Then why are we doing this? Because we just going to die. And we're not going to rise. And we're going to be miserable. And so we got to know. And understand that our Lord. Resurrected. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and go to the scripture. Again. We're talking about the resurrection power. And really believing believing in the resurrection because many christians are trying to simplify um because they're not fully awake yet the message of the cross hey god and they're trying to take the power 
the supernatural ability out of the message of the cross. A lot of churches don't even allow, allow prophetic words anymore. Saying that, oh, people misuse the gift. But that that's not an excuse to shut it down. If somebody's misusing it, you sit the person down. But you don't just throw the baby out with the bathwater. The resurrection. Do you, We believe in the supernatural if we're Christians. We believe in a holy, sovereign God who raised up his seed from the dead. But we don't see as many miracles in the church because people have have diluted their mind and diluted their belief with worldliness. You got to keep holding fast to what God and that Bible and his word really says. And if you're fully persuaded that you're serving a creator and a master that can raise up one from the dead, then that should empower you to believe that he can transform your life, to believe that he can take you out of the yokes of bondages of sin and make you new. Like I, I, I believe that. And I feel like that's why the power of God surges through me and is moving me forward into a place where a lot of people who are still sleeping do not understand. They're looking at me like, oh, I don't take all that. And oh, you just want to be seen. And oh, you did. No, God is doing a work in his people. And if we believe in his resurrection power, then we can't live the same. I don't understand how you can live the same. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't. I, I'm not going to hate to give up the world. Because the Bible says that this world is going to pass away. But his word that he places in me, that resurrected word, mm -hmm, that which is going to call me up out the grave. Because some people don't even know the Bible. So they're thinking that, oh, when they die, they're going to heaven. Newsflash, no. No. When we read through the word of God, we find out in the book of 1 Thessalonians, hallelujah, and in other places in the Bible, that Jesus is going to descend from heaven with the shout of the archangel and that the dead in Christ are going to rise. And those that are still on the earth who are yet alive will meet him in the air as well. Can I tell you there is no secret rapture? It ain't going to be no secret. People are going to see that. And, and there's going to be a lot of wailing and moaning. Please don't misunderstand me. If, if we're believing in that moment, then we have to believe it moment by moment by moment that, that this is happening. Because if I fall asleep, that means that if I die and I don't believe it, then I'm not going to rise. I'm not going to resurrect. There's, there, and, and, and there's no reason not to believe it. Hallelujah. There's no reason not to believe it. Our belief has got to be established and steadfast in the resurrection. Because the resurrection is the power source. Other than that, it's just a bunch of good moral tales. Which is what you see in the majority of mainstream places. It's a bunch of good moral... Ah, God! It's a bunch of good moral tales. But there is no power. I don't know when was the last time that I saw a pastor in a church that I was in cast out a devil. Now, thankfully, I've been in places and I've seen devils get cast out. I've seen healing and deliverances. But a lot of places you go now, you don't see that like you need to. People need to see that. People need to see it. And people don't see it because of all the lukewarm living. People behind the pulpits do. People in the congregation do. People in the choir do. Can I tell you there's no reward for that? There's no reward for mixing your life up with the world. There's no reward for doing that. And I know that sounds judgmental, but it ain't me because I ain't the judge. He lets me know. If you go to the book of Revelation, we're still talking about resurrection. Chapters 2 and 3. Jesus lets you know out of the seven churches, 
only two of them are ready. The other five, he's dealing with and telling, if I find you in this state when I come, you're not coming. So these are not my words, hallelujah. These are the words of our Savior himself. And I'll read a little bit of that. I'll start at Revelation 3. Because he, he gives a strong warning to the dead church. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write. These things say he who has the seven spirits of God. And the seven stars. I know your works. That you have a name that you are alive but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. What does that mean? That means the will of the flesh. When I come into full communion with God. My will is ready to die. Because I have come to a point of saying I surrender. So I say. So now I've got to let that surrender happen. I can't surmise in my brain. And look for reasons why not to die. I've got to die now to live later. Remember Jesus said. He who loses his life shall Find it. Hallelujah. Too many people finding their life on this earth. Like I said, if I believe I'm going to resurrect, I don't hate to let it go. Because this life is but a moment. But eternity? Oh, I don't want to see my eternity without God. I'd rather let it go. I'd rather not try to fit in. I'd rather not be caught out there in the world doing whatever I'm big enough to do. Still clubbing, still drinking, still cussing, still lying, still whoremongling. But I'm saved. Can I tell you, God is long-suffering. But on that day of judgment, mm -mm, that, that's not going to get you. Oh, God, that's not going to get your name in the Lamb Book of Life. And it's not my words. They're His. See, I'm finding people preaching too many feel-good messages. And not reminding people the punishment for sin. Jesus didn't die on the cross and bleed out. And take 39 stripes for us to reject our healing and continue in sin. I don't think so. And I'm calling the devil out. And I'm calling out false ministry. People need to stop lying and start warning. Because the time is getting short and people are getting lost along the way. I'm going to read to you out of Revelation chapter 22. I'm going to prove it's not my words. They're his words. It says, Revelation chapter 22, starting with verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers. Do you hear that? God said dogs. That, that's a strong word. And sorcerers. And sexually immoral. You know what that is? That's fornication and adultery and, and all that other stuff. Homosexuality. I said it. You ain't going to heaven living like that. Murderers. And idol idol idolaters. And whoever loves and practices a lie. I testify. That this word is true. I, Jesus, has sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Hallelujah. Not my words, they're his words. So I'm just being a, I'm, I'm just being a messenger. Hey, don't shoot the messenger. Those are his words. And we need to take them serious. Like every time I read that, that scares me. And I'm not doing those things. But I'm just like, God, please keep me until you come. Help me refrain. Help me not get caught back up in the world. Lusting at the things that don't belong to me. Got my eyes more on focus on television and video games than reading my word and prayer. Don't let Satan entertain you and cause you to get in a fantasy and miss your crown. Because that's what's happening. A lot of entertainment and a little bit of the word. Uh-uh. You need to have at least five or six hours a day of the word. And maybe a little bit of 
entertainment, if any at all, because most of it is so grotesque and nasty and defiled. Who wants to watch it? It's so full of pornography, cursing, lying, witchcraft, and sorcery. It's almost impossible to find something decent for your child to even watch. Because the cartoons, the, the, the characters are dressed in nudity or are, are, are mutated. We got to see and understand that we're in the time of the end. We got to believe that, accept that, and start rebuking the devil in our everyday lives. And letting him know, you're not going to control me. I said it. Rebuking the devil in your everyday life. And that's why I'm sharing what I'm sharing. Because I don't say this only to you. I get up every day and I preach this word. Ah! Mm, that's why it's so good to me. To myself. I talk it through in myself. I remind myself what God has told me. And I tell the devil flat out, I'm not going to be lost. You do you, and I'm going to believe God. Revelations chapter 20 reminds us, because I believe we're in that time, y'all. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. And not in the time dispensation of this. But we're in the time where the saints of God are going to be tested once again unto death. A lot of people believe in a pre-trib rapture. But that's not the truth. We just talked about how God is going to come with the trump. The shout of the archangel. And the dead in Christ are going to rise. And those that are living are going to meet him in the air. That doesn't sound like a secret rapture to me. That doesn't sound like people just going to be taken away and ain't nobody going to know where they went. See, that's a, a lie of Satan, hell, and death, and the grave. That people been believing that they need to read their Bible and get that straight. But I'm going to read to you Revelation 20 and 4. It says, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Those are the saints that have made it and rose with Christ. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Now that's the millennial reign, y'all, but it, did, you, did you hear all that stuff that happened before? These people was beheaded. They refuse to take the mark of the beach. They refuse to place their allegiance with anybody but with God. We're in the time and the season of the coming Antichrist. I expect him in my lifetime. It may be at the end of my lifetime, but I expect to see him be revealed fully in my lifetime. And if this is to occur, then the saints of God need to be ready for that. Because this one... This Antichrist is coming with all kinds of deception, all kinds of lying wonders. And the Bible says the whole world is going to marvel after him and believe that he is the Messiah. But that's why you got to know your word. When my Messiah returns, ah, he going to catch me up in the air. Ah, God, he going to be able to do more than just call fire from heaven. He going to be able to call us all up. To meet him. Amen. So no. Don't be deceived by some false prophet. Who can just call down fire. That ain't Jesus yet. When, when, when we meet him. We will know him. By the authority. Of his resurrection. Because those who died in Christ. Oh. Are going to bust out the grave. When the real Messiah shows up. Amen. And that's my resurrection power message for today. Saints of God, don't delay it. Be resurrected now that you might be resurrected later. God bless and shalom.